Is this a Starship flight? The XZY-1 rocket, recently tested by Chinese startup Space Epoch. On May 29th local time, or 4.40 p.m. Eastern on the 28th, the company carried out a vertical takeoff and vertical landing test at the Haiyang spaceport. The purpose of this test was to verify the basic flight and recovery capabilities of the vehicle, similar in spirit to the SN series suborbital flights SpaceX conducted during early Starship development. However, by relying on an established design, Space Epoch has taken a shortcut and pushed forward with a more refined first demonstration. The test was straightforward. The XZY-1 lifted off from a static test stand, flew to an altitude of 2.5 kilometers, and then performed a controlled descent to a splashdown in the adjacent bay. According to the company, the flight lasted 125 seconds in total. The sequence of events, including full engine ignition, throttling during ascent, engine cutoff at apogee, reignition of the center engines, and soft water landing, closely mirrored the early Starship SN flights. Based on available video footage and company statements, all these steps were carried out successfully. This wasn't just a simple demonstration, the entire exercise was clearly aimed at showcasing Space Epoch's ability to replicate SpaceX's VTVL maneuvers, specifically water-based recovery. While SpaceX has conducted a handful of Starship water landings, some successful, others less so, Space Epoch's test was conducted at a much lower altitude and closer range. Comparing the two programs directly isn't entirely fair, as SpaceX is working with near-orbital trajectories and recovering vehicles from the Indian Ocean, while XZY operated within a narrow vertical range. Still, the operational similarity between the tests illustrates just how closely Space Epoch is following in Starship's footsteps. After splashdown, the XZY-1 was recovered by ship. Images from the recovery process show that the rocket appeared to remain largely intact. However, one crucial detail remains unclear. The aft section, where the engines are located, was submerged during recovery. Without clear post-flight images or inspection data, it's impossible to say with certainty whether the engines survived the landing intact or sustained damage. Space Epoch will need to release more technical documentation or imagery to confirm the condition of the vehicle's most important systems. Nonetheless, the company's ambitions are undeniable. Space Epoch clearly has its sights set on reusability and likely full reusability in the long run, something that very few companies outside of SpaceX have even attempted. Their designs also leave little room for doubt about their inspiration. The XZY-1 test vehicle stands 26.6 meters tall and measures 4.2 meters in diameter, about half the size of Starship. Its polished stainless steel exterior is unmistakably similar, as is the choice of propellant, a Methalox engine system using liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The rocket's thrust reportedly reached 57 tons during this flight, and its engines are intended to be reusable. The only distinct design difference lies in the fins, which appear to be narrow and blade-like rather than the wide control flaps seen on Starship. Following the successful VTVL test, Space Epoch has set its sights on orbital flight within the year, an ambitious goal, especially for a startup. If they succeed, they aim to launch up to 10 tons to low Earth orbit using a reusable variant of the XZY-1. Notably, this would represent a payload class higher than Starship's demonstrated capabilities to date, though Starship's design aims to far exceed that once operational. What many might not realize is that this test was not the first major milestone for Space Epoch. As early as 2023, the company was already generating buzz for building a full-scale rocket prototype that bore a striking resemblance to Starship. That version stood 64 meters tall, had a total mass of 515 tons, and was also made of stainless steel. Its design include a tapered nose cone and cylindrical body, and it too used Methalox propellant. That same year, Space Epoch conducted a 70-ton thrust static fire and performed a water drop test to simulate recovery stress. Plans were also announced to recover the booster using a tower system similar to SpaceX's Mechazilla catch towers. According to a 2023 investor briefing, the full-scale rocket was designed to deliver 6.5 tons to a 1,100-kilometer orbit, support 20 reuses, and fly up to 25 times per year. To fund development, the company raised 200 million yuan, or about 28 million US dollars, in November of 2023. At the time, the prototype appeared crude, visible rivets, rough welds, and incomplete systems. In contrast, the XZY-1 tested in May of 2025 shows clear improvements in build quality, precision, and control, evidence of rapid iteration. But can this Starship clone beat the real thing? Probably not. 
While Space Epoch and others may showcase reusable capabilities at smaller scales, Starship is targeting full payload delivery to orbit, on-orbit refueling, lunar landings, and Mars missions. Challenges that involve orbital re-entry heating, advanced flap control, tank insulation, and rapid turnaround with minimal refurbishment. Copying Starship's exterior is easy, replicating its complex flight-proven systems is not. The real test lies in surviving orbital heat, reliable multi-engine startups, interstage separation, and long-duration guidance, areas where SpaceX has spent over a decade advancing the state of the art. Still, Space Epoch's fast progress is impressive and contributes to global momentum toward reusable spaceflight. But Starship remains unmatched in scale and ambition. Let us know your thoughts on Space Epoch's Starship clone in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to follow SpaceX's journey to the future of spaceflight. As I've emphasized before, Space Epoch and its Starship-like rockets are far from the only examples of SpaceX-inspired designs emerging around the world. In fact, a growing number of aerospace companies, particularly in China, are adopting similar strategies, replicating key elements of SpaceX's designs in their own rockets. One of the most prominent of these is Deep Blue Aerospace. The company is currently working on its Nebula 2 rocket, which bears a striking resemblance to SpaceX's Falcon 9. From the two-stage architecture to the grid fins, interstage payload fairing, and the booster's F section, the similarities are clear. Even the materials appear to take cues from both Falcon 9 and Blue Origin's New Glenn. Perhaps most interestingly, Deep Blue Aerospace plans to use a launch and landing tower similar to the chopsticks system SpaceX uses with Starship. In an earlier version, the Nebula 1, the company even combined a dragon-like crew capsule with a booster to create a suborbital tourism system reminiscent of Blue Origin's New Shepard. Another company following a similar path is Cosmoleap, which is developing the Leap or Yuechian rocket system. This design merges Starship's stainless steel construction and catch system with the more traditional Falcon 9 layout. To support this ambitious project, Cosmoleap has secured significant investment, signaling strong confidence in their approach. And there's more on the horizon. Landspace, after successfully launching the Methalox-powered stainless steel Zhu Chui-2, is now turning its focus to Zhu Chui-3, a fully reusable vehicle that clearly aims to rival Starship. Similarly, Space Pioneer is preparing to unveil the Tianlong-3, which combines design elements from both Falcon 9 and Starship. Even national space agencies are adopting this trend. China's future version of the Long March 9 heavy lift rocket is expected to borrow heavily from Starship's fully reusable architecture. With so many companies racing to recreate SpaceX's success, 2025 and beyond could mark the beginning of a new era in global rocketry, one where imitation isn't just flattery, but a fast track to competition. Clearly, despite the impressive effort to imitate, I believe that Space Epoch's rocket and other Starship copies still cannot surpass the original. While these rockets often attempt to replicate Starship's most celebrated features, they tend to do so in a piecemeal fashion, sometimes even merging elements from different rockets and systems into a single platform. On paper, this might seem innovative, but in practice, these combinations often lack cohesion. Mismatched components can lead to compatibility issues and unintended design flaws. More concerning is the tendency for these efforts to focus solely on the external features of Starship, neglecting the core technologies that make SpaceX's vehicle truly revolutionary. Superficial copying can lead to critical failures during testing and development. A prime example is the Tianlong-3 rocket, which suffered an embarrassing mishap when it unexpectedly lifted off the pad during a routine static fire test, an error that reflects a lack of deeper technical understanding. Even more critically, an over-reliance on imitation can stifle creativity and innovation. When companies or even entire national programs center their strategy around copying others, they risk losing their own technological identity. The result is a short-term gain that undermines long-term sustainability, which is evident in how some companies have abandoned kerosene for methane, switched from traditional materials to stainless steel, and ditched landing legs in favor of catching towers, all in an attempt to mirror Starship. But copying every detail without building the foundational expertise often leads to fragile progress. It's hard to imagine any copycat rocket truly competing. Without unique innovation or the infrastructure to support such grand ambitions, these imitation rockets are likely to fade away as the real Starship continues to define the future of spaceflight.
In the coming months, SpaceX must work quickly to help Starship overcome its current limitations and firmly establish its leading position in spaceflight innovation. At present, Starship has yet to fully reach orbit and successfully deploy a payload, a milestone that China's Zhuchui-2 has already achieved. To move forward, SpaceX must ensure that the next Starship flight not only reaches orbit but also carries completes key mission objectives such as deploying demonstration payloads and paving the way for operational satellite deployments, in-space refilling tests, and more. These steps are essential to proving that Starship is more than just a bold concept, it's a fully capable game-changing launch system. Following that, SpaceX's top priority should be mastering the complex landing procedure for both the booster and ship. Successfully recovering both stages using the Mechazilla catching arms will mark the realization of full reusability, a cornerstone of the Starship program and a major differentiator from any of its imitators. During each flight, SpaceX must also continue refining every subsystem, which include engines, propellant tanks, flaps, thermal protection systems, guidance algorithms, and more. Enhancing the reliability of these systems not only improves safety and performance, but also supports rapid reusability, critical to achieving Starship's intended high-flight cadence. As Starship approaches operational readiness, SpaceX also needs to take decisive steps toward its longer-term goals, building its infrastructure for lunar and Martian missions. These efforts are vital, especially as China accelerates its own ambitions in deep space exploration. The competition is heating up, and deadlines for major missions like Artemis and Mars cargo flights are fast approaching. Despite the challenges ahead, SpaceX has consistently proven its ability to do what others consider impossible. The team has already landed boosters using Mechazilla arms and even reused one in a recent flight tangible proof that their vision is not only feasible, but already progressing. Once SpaceX fully masters Starship, it won't just outperform the imitators, it will leave them far behind, solidifying its role as the global leader in next-generation spaceflight. Let's watch closely to see how this historic journey unfolds. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.